Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are checking out my favourite Z390 motherboards. It's another top five video and the categories for this one include best entry level, uh, best value all rounder, best of the best, so a sort of no compromise type solution there, a best micro ATX and then the best mini ITX. Uh, there's loads of motherboards to choose from, and if you've watched any of my previous videos in this series covering the Z370, B450, or X399 motherboards, then you're probably going to be a bit surprised by how this one turned out. Okay, so who makes the best entry-level Z390 motherboard? Well, that one would be Gigabyte, since their Z390 UD is the only sub $150 US Z390 motherboard that can run with the 9900K fully unleashed without suffering any VRM throttling. For best results, you really need to spend at least $170 US though, and that will be my next pick. Still, if you only have $120 US to spend, but you really want to get a Z390 motherboard, which is fair enough, then Gigabyte's UD model is really the best way to go. As I said, it has the best sub $170 US VRM, cooling is adequate, and on top of that, it matches all the other entry-level boards in terms of features. Board layout's excellent, and you get all the essentials, so it's about the best you could hope for at this price point. I'd avoid budget models from ASRock. Typically, ASRock is very good at the entry level. They offer plenty of value, but I don't feel that's the case with their Z390 range, and the same is true for ASUS. So the next best thing here is the MSI Z390A Pro. Not a bad board, that one. It's a decent alternative, again, if you can't get your hands on Gigabyte's UD model. Though, in that case, I'd actually suggest spending a little bit more and getting the Z390 Gaming X. That's another Gigabyte board. Though, having said that, at that point, you might as well spend a little bit more and get my next pick. So let's go see what that is. The best value all-rounder is probably the best board from this entire series in the sense that it makes the most sense. Uh, you don't really want to spend more than $200 US or much more than $200 US on a mainstream motherboard. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do that, but some people like to and we'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, for this category, the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Elite or the Pro model are hands down the best options here. Uh, especially if you've only got about $200 US or up to $200 US to spend on a motherboard. The Pro model costs about $10 more than your Elite, coming in at $180 US. And they're both pretty much the same board. The Pro has a few extra features, such as uh, two thermal guards for both the M.2 slots, PCIe armor on both slots, and USB Type-C on the I.O. panel. So if you can do without that stuff, and I suspect that most of you can, then the Elite really is the better choice. It's a small saving, but if you're not going to use those features, then you might as well pocket the $10 and yeah, get the Elite. Either way though, you can't really go wrong with either of these Gigabyte Aorus boards. They're both exceptional, and I found they deliver excellent VRM thermal performance, uh, beating $300 plus motherboards from ASUS. Alternatively, ASRock's Z390 Extreme 4 is a solid board, as is MSI's Z390 Tomahawk. But if you plan on going all out with a Core i9 9900K, which is what I assume you would end up doing at some point if you're buying a Z399 motherboard, then I would strongly recommend getting either the Aorus Elite or the Pro model. This category is pretty simple. You've got money to burn and you seem happy to burn it. In that case, I could probably interest you in either the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme or the MSI Meg Z390 Godlike. Both are exceptional products and very much the definition of overkill. And they both also cost more than the Core i9 9900K, at least at the MSRP. The Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme, that comes in at $550 US. But outdoing that is the MSI Meg Z390 Godlike at $600 US. They are both incredible products. Incredibly ridiculous, but impressive all the same. Uh, personally though, I can't really choose between the two. I'm not sure which one I would rather have. They're both jam-packed with features. The VRMs are fit for a 32 core Threadripper CPU, and there's more PCI expansion and M.2 slots than the 16 lane 99 k I will know what to do with. Having checked out the Godlike, I thought that would be hands down the best Z390 motherboard, and that'd be the one I'd go with. Uh, but the Aorus Extreme packs 10 gigabit networking, uh, the I.O. panel is better stocked with USB ports, and the backplate is a really nice feature that helps improve cooling. 
that is the big huge backplate on the actual backside of the PCB and I don't mean some sort of fancy IO shield. So yeah, really impressive cooling. The RGB lighting looks great if you're into that. So yeah, really impressive looking board. But for me, it's still just too close to cool. So you'll have to check both those boards out and see which one um, better suits your needs. There are four options here and half of them aren't that great. Uh, the ASUS Tough Z390M Pro uh, Gaming is a pathetic offering at $180 US uh, with its low budget four phase VRM. The ASRock Z390M Pro 4 is really no better, but at least it's only $135. Uh, that more accurately reflects, I suppose, what you're getting there opposed to $180. Then we have the MSI MPG. Z390M Gaming Edge AC, awesome name there, MSI, and the Gigabyte Z390M Gaming, a more appropriate name, I suppose. In terms of value, I'd grab the Gigabyte board, and not just because I don't want to say the name of the MSI board again, but if you're after the best Micro ATX board, then yeah, the MSI MPG uh, Z390M Gaming Edge AC, I think I nailed that. Yeah, that would probably be the board I would go with. It costs $25 more, but you get some nice features such as uh, Realtek ALC1220 audio, Intel Wireless AC9560 uh, with Bluetooth 5.0, and some really massive extended VRM heatsinks. The Edge is also a great looking board for those of you that care about aesthetics, and it will fit right into pretty much any micro ATX build. The Gigabyte model, on the other hand, it has few red highlights, so it is a bit less neutral, but still overall a decent looking board. Last, but certainly not least, is the smallest category, though it's not the smallest in terms of numbers. We had four micro ATX boards, whereas we have half a dozen mini ITX boards, so more of the little suckers to choose from. There's actually two models from ASRock, and we even get a board from Super Micro. But this time we will be going with the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX slash AC. This little board packs a five-phase VRM, which I suppose in itself isn't that impressive, though it does employ ISL 9927 power stages, and it's the only Z390 motherboard that we know of to use these 60 amp beasts. For $190 US, this is a seriously high quality mini ITX motherboard, packing an eight layer PCB, an impressive amount of cooling for a board of its size, a Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 5, Intel Thunderbolt 3, dual M.2 slots, four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, Intel 2T2 dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 5.0, and much more. It's hands down the best mini ITX motherboard, and nothing else really comes close in my opinion. That said, the Gigabyte Z390i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi or MSI MPG Z390i Gaming Edge AC aren't bad alternatives either. They just aren't my go-to choices for the ultimate Z390 Mini ITX motherboard. So there you have it, my top five picks. We already have quite a few Z390 motherboards on offer, but there's really only a few good options in each category. And unfortunately, the choices are narrowed down quite substantially by what is probably the worst motherboard range ever from ASUS. Bit harsh, well, maybe, depends on how you look at it, but yeah, overpriced boards with budget VRMs seems to be the name of the game here from ASUS, so not too impressed what they have on offer, and I hope this doesn't become a trend. ASRock and MSI have a few good hits mixed in with some not so great options, while Gigabyte is pretty solid from top to bottom. Anyway, I hope these picks have helped you out, and if you're buying a new Z390 motherboard, let me know which one you're choosing, and I suppose if you disagree with any of my picks. As always, very interested to read your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.